event ended, and it took me a couple of days, but I knew I still had one thing left I had to do. I had to call my mom. I called her and I started off that conversation and I told her how much I loved her. How much I appreciated everything she had ever done for me. I told her I forgave her for anything she may have thought she had done wrong in raising me. I said I forgave myself. I forgave myself for the stories I had told that scared little child all those years, 41 years for that matter. I forgave myself and most importantly, I had forgiven my biological father. I told her I understood exactly why he did what he did and I was at peace, I was great. Everything was fine. I wanted her to know this. And that's when she replied to me and said, you know, I wish I would have been harder on you. I wish I would have done things a little differently. I told her, Mom, you did everything exactly right in the exact way it had to be done. Otherwise, I wouldn't be the person I am today. I, still, I reminded her how fragile I was. I nearly killed myself multiple times because of all the pain in my past. And I said, if you would have if you would have been any harder on me, I probably would have broken. Everything happens exactly the way it needs to. By this time, she's crying. And she tells me, Joey, I've got something I need to tell you. Okay. She says, I've been keeping a secret from you for 41 years. And only three people know of this secret. My biological father, Robert my stepfather, Bill, and my uncle John, who had just passed away the year before. And I could tell in the tone of her voice that this secret she'd been hiding, it was weighing on her so heavily, she had to get this out. So I told her, go ahead, what's going on, Mom? And she said, Joey, Robert is not your father. Did I just hear her correctly? Did she say what I think she just said? The man who I blamed all of my pain, all my struggle, all the bullshit in my life for 41 years that I just forgave and released of that burden wasn't even my father, wasn't even the cause of all of this pain I had and this story, these lies I've been telling myself. So, having gone through this experience previously, you know, earlier in the week, I was feeling invincible. I said, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. I'd love to hear this, Mom. And she's crying. She goes on to tell me, Robert, he was unable to have children, and she wanted a child so badly. She was willing to do anything it took to have her own baby. She said she even went as far is reaching out to the Colombian embassy to look at adopting a child. And that's when I stopped. Hold on, hold on. Are you telling me that the reason I get so tan in the summertime, and the reason why I'm the only single person in my entire family with bright blue eyes, are you telling me I'm the orphan child of a Colombian drug lord? <laughs> Said, no, honey, no, you're not a Colombian. You're not half Colombian. That would have been a cool story. <laughs> so I said, go on, go on. No, I'm, at this point, I'm like, I gotta hear what's next. So, like, go on. She says, it was back in 1978. They were doing an experimental procedure known as in vitro fertilization, and she worked at a hospital in Kansas City. So she decided to sign up for that program. And they went in, they did all the paperwork, confidentiality-wise, and the rest is history. And it was at that moment I realized that this story and this lie I'd been telling myself wasn't true. This man who womanized, alcoholic, abandoning man who I blamed all this pain on was only my mom's first husband and just happened to leave when I was born. 
Meanwhile, I come to find out that my real father was a med student at the hospital. And he had later become a doctor at that same hospital. I'm like, wait a minute, you're telling me I have the genes and the DNA of a doctor? <laughs> that explained a lot in my life of the way I thought and how I was a lot different from the rest of my family. I was like, wow. And then it sank into me. Wait a minute. Not only did I just rewrite my entire past and my entire biological DNA, I also rewrote the future for myself, for my mom, and for my two boys, who were now the biological grandchildren of a doctor. And if this wasn't awesome enough, I also realized I just unleashed my mom from 41 years of this lie and this burden she'd been forced to carry and keep within her, all because of the power of compassion, forgiveness, and love. I realized that by, by loving her so unconditionally, loving myself, forgiving myself, forgiving her, forgiving everybody, it gave me the ability to rewrite my entire past and to script out a whole new story and a whole new version of reality. And this is the same power that each of you have. We all have this power to rewrite our future, to re sorry, rewrite our past, to script out and design our future any which way we can dream it possible. And we also have the power to live right here and right now in this moment all through our wonderful imagination. You see, there is only this moment. There's nothing else. There's no past. There's no future. There is right here and right now. And the stories you continue to tell yourself about who you believe you are and who you think you are is exactly who you're going to be. So as you leave here today, you can go home. You can continue living the same stories and the same lies you've been telling yourself all these years, and things will probably be the same. They might even get worse. But there's a better option. Start your own process of healing. Start your own process of forgiving yourself first. And unlock your own ability to design your future. The only question I have for you is, what reality will you choose to create for yourself the power is completely up to you. It's your choice.